All right, let's talk about the best offense in football, the offense that every other team fears. It is the Detroit Lions. Who would have thought? And listen, they you know, you can't argue with the results, right? All the points they've put up, they're third in points per drive, so you can't even say like they they maybe just, you know, gotten lucky with how many drives they've had. Uh, not really. No, they've just been incredibly effective so far through two games. They've also played two defenses that I actually think, you know, are pretty decent. I think that, you know, the Philadelphia Eagles defense certainly, uh, has shown it can be formidable, really shut down the Vikings. And then, you know, the Washington's, I would have thought would be good heading into this game. So those are two teams I don't know exactly what to make of in Washington and Philly. And so it makes it harder when I'm talking about a team in Detroit that I don't really know what to make of because they are still a, you know, rebuilding team. Uh, but let's talk about kind of the good and the bad, why I still think they might be uh, a little bit inconsistent in a couple pieces away, but also why they have some pieces that are great and cornerstones to potentially build this offense around. So let's get into it. And let's start off with this play where, you know, uh, I'm just going to evaluate the game. Some of it was the Washington football team made some mistakes. And this is going to be one of those where it's man coverage. And, you know, the Lions, to their credit, are running a play that can be very difficult against this type of coverage to cover for the Washington football team, also known as the Commanders. You know, let's be honest. Washington football team is more fun. So watch how I want to uh, start to implement this pick play. So it works well. It kind of gets the guy who was getting picked uh, out of position a little bit. Now he has to run through it, but he fights through it okay. He's not in a bad situation. But it seems like the other Washington player was expecting a switch here because he's also covering that guy now, meaning the player who was just supposed to help set up someone else get open is now the guy who is wide open. What makes this especially nice is that the guy who is wide open right here, Amon Ra St. Brown, who is, you know, easily the Lions' best offensive player, I would say. Uh, or at least a wide receiver, you know, they got some good offensive linemen, but watch what he's going to do from here. Jared Goff, to his credit, I would say, read the play and got it to a different guy, because that's not what his read was, so good play by him, and an Amon Ross St. Brown in open space picks up a ton of yards, so it's both, right? It's bad Washington, they made a mistake, there's no denying that, you know, uh, even if you're the most uh, delusional, diehard Lions fan, you would even say, yeah, we got a break there, sure, but also, you took advantage of your breaks, which is what good football teams do and what they did. To talk a little more Amon Ross St. Brown, I almost, when I was making this video, almost just shifted gears and made the whole video about Amon Ross St. Brown because I had so much to talk about with him. Uh, I'm not doing that. It's about the offense as a whole, but, you know, I uh, can't talk about the offense without Amon Ross St. Brown and how he is emerging as, a, you know, uh, my podcast co-host Kyle called him one of the premier receivers in football. Uh, I'm at least willing to say that he's, you know, a guy you can build your offense around. And this is just a, you know, traditional what you want, like out of a number one receiver. It's a one-on-one -on -one matchup. He's actually running a little bit uh, closer to the op, uh, to the right side of the field than I've shown on the screen, but you know, it, it's cut off on the end zone. So he's running uh, sort of uh, outside the hash marks, but still running into the end zone. Watch how on this play begins, and you see it's, you know, not really that open, which you think about him as, oh, he's a guy who gets separation. Well, not here, but Jared Goff is still going to trust him. And as you see, that ends up being the correct decision as Amon Ross St. Brown is able to make the grab and get into the end zone for a touchdown. So if, you know, you have the quarterback's trust to just say, hey, when you don't have separation, I'm still giving you the football. That is ideally, you know, what you want. That makes an offense really thrive, I think, and that's what was able to happen there for, you know, for the Lions and why they're able to, uh, you know, potentially be a very good offense. Of course, who knows exactly how good they are because we are still early on into the season. Like I said, you know, don't know how to evaluate all this stuff just yet. We're just talking about what has happened so far. But for one thing, I got to credit play calling here. I thought their play calling has been very good uh, so far offensively, where something like this, it's going to be a, really a well-timed play action is what it's going to be, which can get the linebackers to move in. And then the route you see on the screen can be open underneath the corners route and potentially get you some yards. Watch how when Goff runs this play action, you do get the linebackers way moved in and you got the corner all turned around due to a good route. So these two things working together definitely can allow for you to get guys open. You're putting guys in favorable situations in spots that they can win, and then they're winning those spots. And as you see, Goff is going to make this throw, because one thing we definitely remember from Goff with the Rams is if you're scheming guys open and you're getting guys open, he will hit those players. He has good arm talent. He has some flaws in his game. There's no denying that. We'll actually get more into that as this video goes along, but he tends to be pretty good when guys are getting open consistently. Like this plays another example of just scheming guys open a little bit, where it's going to be a cover, th uh, it's actually cover six zone, uh, but you know, uh, it's the zone coverage you see on the screen. 
And with a lion receiver running that route, what's that going to then do is it's going to bring those two players further in, which, you know, in theory, wouldn't be a big deal for Washington, right? That's the only eligible receiver on that side of the field except for the halfback so you know who cares that's fine but then when the Lions have another receiver running all the way like that this is how it can potentially get open as they don't really have someone uh Washington doesn't really have someone who can be prepared for a route like that and this is just again it's a good play call against this type of coverage just things are being schemed up well for Detroit and as you see when Jared Goff takes the snap and he does look in that direction you see how there is someone who's about to get wide open right here so this is kind of what you're you know what things are going uh well what's working for this Lions team however this is where we need to shift gears a little bit and talk about you know maybe a potential negative here with the Lions and maybe part of why I still want to see a little bit more before I'm willing to say that this Lions team is awesome there's the Jared Goff of it all, who has been inconsistent. And while I said he tends to be pretty good at running an offense, this is going to actually be an exception to that. Watch, he's just going to miss this throw. There's a bit of pressure, so that was why, but still, a bit of a missed throw there. You would have loved to hit on that one, because it was schemed wide open down the field. You want to be able to hit on those, and that is my biggest concern, I think, about the Lions for the rest of this season, is there's stuff I like about this Lions offense, but it feels like you might still be a couple pieces away, and one of those pieces might be at quarterback. Goff's a fine one, but, you know, there's some issues. Something like this is a good example of some of the issues, where it's, again, schemed up well. It's, it's incredible to me how when they were going up against zone, they had plays designed to beat zone. When they were going up against man, they had uh, play calls to beat man. So it seemed like they were really one step ahead of Washington throughout this game. So give a lot of credit to the play calling there. But you know, the way it works, you have two receivers kind of run deeper and this can actually work against uh, zone as well. So, you know, uh, it works against both typically. However, when Goff takes a snap and looks in that direction, it is not working against this play. You know, uh, Washington's all over it. They're reading it well. So, okay, this happens in football. You have a play call that you like. It just doesn't work out. However, Goff throws it anyways, and he got way away with one there. That should have been intercepted. Goff got completely lucky, and we just know this is part of what Goff does sometimes, is Goff will put the ball in harm's way. That's, that's part of who he is, and that is definitely the concern if you are a Detroit Lions fan. That being said, things have gone very well through two weeks, so, uh, you know, it's sort of a difference between a prediction and what I am talking about. He's made some mistakes through two weeks. My prediction is they'll start to hurt a little bit more the more that he makes uh, them and the more that the season goes on, but I could be wrong about that. So that, you know, that that's just a guess. So I think it's a fair current concern to have, though, but it's, you know, again, I still feel like the Lions are... I think they're probably a year away because of that and because I still, you know, I want to see Jamison Williams in the offense. To me, I feel like their offense would look way better once that happens. So things like that. But I wanted to end on a good note, so I will. This play, it's going to be, uh, you know, an all-out blitz, really, for the Detroit, uh, for the Washington football team against the Detroit Lions. As you see, it's a six-man rush, but this actually leaves uh, Swift wide open right here. And I don't know uh, what exactly went wrong here. Maybe I thought Swift was blocking. I don't know. But Swift is wide open. There's nobody on him. So seemingly a great situation. However, Goff had to throw off balance, which, you know, Swift had to make a diving catch. But then watch him get up and just, you know, run by an entire football team. I mean, that's an incredible play. So if, you know, I wasn't really expecting Swift to play like an elite running back uh, going into the season, but he certainly has been. So that's just another, you know, Another tool to use for the Lions. They have TJ Hawkinson, who I didn't mention. They have Amon Ross St. Brown. If Swift is truly that guy and Jamison Williams can come, you know, into the, hopefully at the end of the season and come and, you know, play well, or at least by next season, he should be good. This could be a loaded offense that could be super exciting. I still think there's some limitations, so that's why I'm not super into this offense, but I think the offense could still be good. But we'll have to see. I want to see more of a sample size before I really am willing to say one way or the other. So let me know what do you think about the Lions offense. Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.